button. And it is four o'clock, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, just know that you can uh, use the slider on your computer in order to see more or less of me and more of the slideshow that I'll be sharing. Um, my name's Chuck Fisher, and I'll be sharing a little bit more about myself momentarily. Um, I also invite you to open the chat window. Um, give me some time so I, I will ask for you to chat in something. Um, it's always fun to play together in the field. Um, if you really want to jump in, uh, you can raise your hand. Uh, and if I don't see it, chat it. Um, and uh, I won't be using the Q&A. We won't have time for that because this is a brief 30-minute webinar. So uh, let's get started. Uh, as I said, I've been having so much fun with this, uh, preparing for this webinar. Uh, it's a Valentine's webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about love uh, and courage and a bunch of other things. And uh, you will see a lot of hearts in this slideshow. And uh, it's uh, kind of a wonderful thing. Uh, and it's... Uh, uh, we'll be exploring why there are so many hearts and why hearts are related to love. So, first off, because it's Valentine's Day, couldn't uh, resist to put in this uh, Valentine's gift. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to all of you from all over where, where you're coming from. I've seen people signed in from uh, East Coast and Texas and uh, across the U.S., uh, it's just so fun to be doing this on Valentine's Day, and uh, I, I promised I'd share just a little bit about me, um, and what you have here are some of my relational resilience. That's one of the words that we use for how we connect with other people. Uh, in the top left are three of my grandkids, a uh, big picture of my family, and my Valentine there in the yellow raincoat. Um, so thrilled to be here to do this with you. Um, if you don't know uh, about me, I'm the Director of Transformational Learning at Dovetail Learning. Uh, I've been at Dovetail as a founding director since the beginning, back in 2009. And uh, we teach resilience to people all over, from healthcare to educators to emergency personnel and families and doctors and um, anyone who's interested. So. Uh, just a little bit more about Dovetail. Uh, we are a nonprofit, and our mission is to strengthen resilience in both children and adults so that we can have a world full of kind, connected human beings. And uh, I uh, uh, would be remiss not to begin with what we begin all of our meetings with, all of our trainings with, uh, most of our webinars with, and that's an invitation to presence. And uh, the way I'll do that is I'll use this singing bowl. Um, all of you from wherever you are, uh, you're at different times of the day. We've had a day behind us. And this is a chance just to pause and presence ourselves, be here and now in this moment. So I'll ring the bell in and then uh, say a few things and then ring the bell out. So inviting just presence of self. Adjusting our posture so that we can have more fullness of self. And because this is a Valentine webinar, just invoke something or someone you love, a place, a pet, a person, and let that love fill your heart. Thinking of one of my favorite quotes from Goethe, um, who says, what is uttered from the heart alone will um, draw others to your own. 
I think I got the quote a little wrong, but um, with that, I invite a deep breath and the presence back to this webinar. Uh, welcome to those of you who are just joining. Uh, I'm Chuck Fisher, so excited to be sharing this work with you. Um, and uh, we also have a practice here. We bell in, we word in. If you would uh, just chat into the chat window um, a word or a phrase about how you are in this moment, what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Um, and uh, oh, great, thank you for doing that. It's so exciting, um, inspired, loved, loving, um, curious, uh, expectant, wondering, love again, <laughs> um, wanting some help with my relationships. Uh, that's a great one. I love how this work uh, inspires me to have stronger relationships that we call relational resilience. Um, and uh, just the grateful and gratitude. Um, and uh, just appreciate everyone who's putting words into the chat. Um, it's, you know, it takes the world, uh, it takes us all to make the world go round. And what we're here to do today is to uh, explore this idea of relational resilience, what nourishes our intimate relationships. And uh, uh, do it through the, the lens of um, what is it that the heart, or why is it that the heart, this beautiful image of the heart, is, is really is the language of love uh, and it's uh, what we all turn to it comes from the words from our poetry uh, from our inspiration and uh, here's just a few of the words that we uh, assign to the heart um, sometimes we'll say well my heart told me so or when I listened to my heart then I knew or I love you with all of my heart uh, and what is the heart of the matter? Or I was so disheartened. Um, all of these words speak to this space and place in our, this, the core of our being that um, really resonates in a way that impacts everything. When our heart is closed, we feel um, closed down and, and usually upset. When our heart is open, we feel inspired and loving and caring and like we can do anything. Uh, this whole heart uh, exploration just fascinates me. Um, I'm a, a person who has fallen in love over and over and over with where I live and the people I work with. I can go all the way back to the, the first uh, work that I did in the field of psychology, which was working with uh, at-risk youth in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina as an Outward Bound instructor and just falling in love with those kids who were struggling so mightily with their lives and having that happen over and over through my whole career. Um, you know, these people are amazing. And uh, love is an essential ingredient. So uh, I'm going to bring uh, Maya Angelou in right away. And she says, love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination, full of hope. Full of hope. Isn't that just what happens? Um, you know, when I uh, have my heart closed down about something, um, I had to go to a meeting yesterday and I was a little upset and I was tense and uh, I thought to myself, um, you know, I was a little anxious, maybe afraid. And I did a little bit of inner work uh, to open my heart and remember that everyone in this meeting was there for the same purpose. And we're all human and we all uh, come with the same baggage, if you will, and also the same hopes and dreams. And it just shifted my heart in a completely uh, opening way. And I went to the meeting and had a fantastic 
experience. Um, I just enjoyed everyone there. And I, I was able to do that by opening my heart, um, jumping the hurdles, leaping the fences, and being full of hope. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to look at five ways to leap the fences in our hearts. We're going to look at some skills related to noticing and gratitude and heartfelt listening. Uh, we're going to look at the word courage. Uh, we call it a resilient mindset. And uh, what, what does it help us know and understand about the power of the heart, the power of love, and uh, how that's connected to um, showing up and speaking authentically and being whole. <coughs> Excuse me. I um, had a mouthful of almonds before I started. And one just went down the wrong pipe. So uh, let's begin here with uh, our favorite definition of resilience. It comes from Ann Maston, University of Minnesota. Uh, she says resilience is an ordinary superpower. It doesn't come from rare and special qualities, but from the everyday magic of being human. And uh, I think we could substitute the word love for resilience. Uh, and let's do that just for the purposes of this webinar on Valentine's Day. Uh, love is an ordinary superpower. It doesn't come from rare and special qualities, but from the everyday magic of being human. So what is that? What does that mean? What is the heart of the matter? It's unbelievable uh, when you really look at it. Uh, this is a picture of um, the vagus nerve, which completely infuses the brain and goes down the central passageways, vagus passages, um, completely infuses the heart. You can see it also infuses the gut. So um, it's a central channel and it connects the heart to the gut and the brain. Um, of course, there are other neurological pathways, but this is a central one. And the heart, um, I'm a trainer for the HeartMath Institute, which is a uh, inspired uh, work looking at the neurocardiology of the heart. It turns out that the heart tells the brain what to do 90% of the time. 10% uh, of the time, the brain will tell the heart what to do, but the heart has its own functional uh, brain inside of it. It's filled with ganglia of neurons that is now called the heart brain. And <clears throat> the same is true for the gut. And we know that because we feel it in our gut. Uh, in addition to saying, well, my heart told me, you know, how many times have you said, well, I felt it in my gut or I knew it in my gut? Uh, that's because the lining of the intestines and the, the small hairs and the lining of the intestines are the first place we experience uh, experience. The perception occurs there and then it flows up through the heart and then to the brain. So the heart has a lot to do with it and uh, uh, the heart and its, its state of being has a lot to do with our love and our loving and our, our being closed down or being opened up. So let's look at two ways that that occurs. One is through stress and anxiety, what we call the freeze, fight, flight. Um, and uh, the other is through regulation, uh, calm, pause, presence, and perceiving, uh, where our uh, sympathetic system is on the stress side, our parasympathetic system is on the regulation side. And <clears throat> you can see on those little graphs under stress and regulation that we're looking at the heart rate variability. That's the, measured by the space between the heart beats. And when we're under stress, our heart is literally beating uh, out of coherence to itself in a, in a, in a, in a difficult way. Um, and we move into regulation. When our heart calms down, it starts beating in harmony to itself. And when we're under stress, uh, the heart signals the brain to shut down and the frontal cortex shuts down. We dumb ourselves down when we're in anxiety. When we move into an open heart, an open-hearted place, uh, our heart is beating in coherence to itself. It's beating in harmony with itself, and it opens the brain up. That's where all our creativity happens. You know, Einstein said he got his best insights when he was singing in the shower, 
Uh, he'd work in the lab and be under stress and work and work and work and then get to the shower and start singing in the shower and something would just pop in because his creativity opened up. So how we manage our own hearts, uh, the state of being of our hearts, if I'm in anxiety, it keeps me separate from others. And when I uh, open my heart, when I bring myself into regulation, um, it connects me with others. So we'll follow that as a thread as we go through this. Um, and uh, I want to bring in uh, Mary Oliver here. She says, love yourself, then forget it, then love the world. And isn't that what we were just talking about? Um, if I can move back into this space where I can love myself and allow my heart to open and be open, um, then I can love the world. Um, and it's a movement that we make. It's a movement in our personal development to go from um, having lots of um, uh, judgments about ourselves to moving towards realizing our gifts and our talents and our resources so that we can truly learn to love this body, this mind, this person. Um, and from here, I can engage the world in a completely different way, an open way, a loving way. So uh, as I said before, we're going to move through a process and the first piece is the skill of noticing. What am I noticing? What am I knowing? What am I sensing? What am I feeling? It starts here inside first. Um, I'm, I'm in, in the exploration of, of Valentine's Day and love and who do I love and why don't I love others and uh, what's that all about? And it all starts here. I got to pause and see what's the cause of what's happening inside me. And uh, what, I, what am I knowing, sense, and feeling begins uh, in myself. Um, it uh, then goes to that significant other, whether it's my child, my partner, uh, spouse, an ex-spouse, uh, a neighbor, uh, someone I'm working with, um, all these people who are significant in our lives who we get shut down sometimes and my heart will close um, and then it will open back up. How do I do that? How do I manage that? <clears throat> All comes down to self-regulation and coming back home to me so that I can be whole and uh, I uh, needed to click the button to get that last piece on the slide. Um, so that I can be that in a relationship. And uh, in noticing, remember that uh, it's not about what happened that matters, it's my reaction to what happened that matters. So we all have reactive patterns. Uh, dovetail learning, we teach a whole set of patterns, which we call protective patterns. I'm not gonna do that today. This is just kind of a light uh, a love of um, what do we notice? And one of the things that we can notice is that we do have reactions and we lose our cool and we shut down. My heart shuts down. Sometimes when I get up in the morning and I get in a little tangle with my wife, my heart shuts, shuts down. Or like I said, yesterday I was going to a meeting and, and my heart started closing and I had to work with myself and open myself back up. Um, so we have stress triggers, we have reactions, we, you know, it gives us an emotional reaction it causes a depletion but you know we can also notice uh, what love can bring well, by just noticing ourselves and wondering and what, what do I have that I can anchor myself to um, I anchor myself to my breath all the time um, I um, have years of breath training I, I was a rock climber for 40 years and the only way to do that was to have deep sense of control with my breath. I'm now a black belt in Aikido and I, I rely on my breath. Uh, when I'm on the mat and I'm working uh, out with someone, if I don't have access to my breath, I have no power at all. If I 
if I close my breath, hold my breath down. Uh, those are some of those skills that I rely on. And uh, another one is this skill of accessing our gratitude. So what does gratitude have to do with love? Um, gratitude changes us. Gratitude grows. Um, we, in our, um, in our, in our approach called We Are Resilient, which is, this is all based on, um, we have tons of science. You can go to the Greater Good Science Center in Berkeley and see the gratitude research, but gratitude changes us neurologically, biochemically, um, and uh, energetically. Uh, as soon as I think of that person that I am grateful for, that, that I'm I'm grateful for my grandkids. I'm grateful for, uh, I live in Northern California and I have redwoods right outside my window here. Um, as soon as I open myself to my gratitude, um, I change because it impacts my heart. My heart starts beating in coherence. Gratitude is right up there at the very top of the spectrum of emotions. Uh, we've got fear at the bottom and gratitude and love right at the top. As soon as I move into gratitude, it opens my heart. Uh, here's a quote from Elie Wiesel, famous uh, psychologist, went through the concentration camps, wrote um, seminal books on hope and love. And he says, for me, I feel gratitude in my heart each time I can meet someone and look at his or her smile. Mm. Think of the people in your life that you get to smile with. Um, of course, we have these mirror neurons in our brain, so that someone smiles, I get to smile with them. That smile comes back to me, it fills me, uh, literally, neurologically, internally. Um, and so finding gratitude is one of the skills that opens our hearts, opens our hearts. I can have gratitude. I remember when I was working as an Outward Bound instructor in the early days, I got paired with this woman who I, I thought she was just a jerk and I really didn't want to do the course with her. And I just had to work on myself and open myself up to um, what's there? Who's in this person? What, you know, and, and I discovered that she was just the most amazing person in the world. So I, I took my psyche, which had shut me down with my thinking, and I just mixed it up, and I gave it a little shake and said, I can find someone in this person uh, the, to be grateful about. Um, and uh, we can all do that every day when there's someone who's just got us a little bit off. What can we be grateful for? about them, who they are, their life, and how that impacts us. So that takes us to uh, the next skill of heartfelt listening. You know, uh, I listen very differently when my heart is closed. I listen with my judgments, I listen with my, brand, my mind, uh, and when my heart is open, I just listen with my whole body. Um, so if I'm feeling apart, all I need to do is listen with my heart and uh, uh, bring in this um, favorite poet is uh, uh, Rumi. He says, uh, let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of love. It will not lead you astray. The strange pull of love, um, heartfelt listening, uh, gives me that sense of that strange pull of love. Um, I was uh, on a trip last week and I was visiting a dear, dear friend who's alcoholic and um, he, uh, he's just the most delightful person, so generous, so kind, and yet so stuck in his addiction um, and uh, I needed to have a, a conversation with him and so I, I had to listen deeply and, and, and be drawn by the strange pull of love to have the courage to talk authentically with him. Um, and we're gonna follow that thread here um, in the next few minutes, uh, because we're gonna look at courage and what courage has to do with the heart. Um, we, we call courage, um, 
you know, it has to do with feeling and knowing and speaking. Um, and uh, we often ask the question, well, what is my heart telling me? Courage comes from the root word core, which means heart. And the way we teach about the courage mindset is that it's about following our heart. If I listen to my heart and see what my deepest values are, it gives me the courage. I don't have to seek courage. I just listen to my heart. Now, what is my heart wanting or needing uh, to do here, to take a stand for, to uh, speak up about, whether it's a bully on the playground or a bully in, in the lawyer legal room, um, uh, having the courage to follow my heart, uh, which is what I did with my friend, to have a, uh, what I thought was going to be a difficult conversation and turned out to be a deeply loving conversation because I tracked in to my heart. Maya Angelou says, uh, courage is the most important of all virtues. And uh, Aristotle, long before, said the first of human, it is the first of human virtues because it makes all the others possible. Courage, core, heart, heartfulness, bringing us into a space where we can be with another person and uh, know them by uh, feeling what my heart is telling me, by listening to my inner knowing, by speaking and acting in ways that honor my values and boundaries. Um, it's really what it's all about. Uh, you know, when I listen to my heart and I know what's true, um, then it, I can speak authentically, which is uh, the last of the skills that we're going to look at today. Um, speaking authentically. When I authentically talk, hearts unlock. When I authentically talk, when I take the tape off of my mouth and I can be authentic, I can stop pretending that um, I'm having an experience with my, my friend who's uh, getting inebriated and I just needed to talk to him. Um, I can have an experience with my, my Valentine, who's my, my wife, um, where we get off track and I just need to open back up to my heart. I can speak authentically from my heart and uh, turn back to Maya Angelou here in the final couple of minutes. Um, she says, the flush of love's light. We dare be brave in the flush of love's light. In the flush of love's light. We dare be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love that sets us free. <sighs> Boy, there's a lot in there, isn't there? We dare be brave and suddenly see that love costs all we are. So I have to let go of myself. I got to get out of my ego. I got to, you know, all that I am is, you know, my identity and my, my judgments and my, uh, you know, my attachments and my strivings. And if I let all of that go, if I let that be, um, I have to, you know, that's the cost. I have to let that be. And yet that's what sets me free. For my heart to open, to be courageous, to speak with kindness and uh, authentically. Um, uh, just pull in these couple of pieces of, of what, what it's not. It's not needing to be right. It's not telling someone what we think of them. Uh, the authenticity is, is about speaking my truth, which is my emotional truth. No one can take what my feeling is away from me um, or asking for what I want and need. Uh, could be having boundaries. Um, my wife and I are working right now on boundaries uh, with each other. Um, you know, we've been married 45 years and we're still working on what are the boundaries we need uh, so that we can speak authentically and know and uh, care and be together. And uh, finally, uh, we'll go back to uh, Rumi who says, close your eyes fall in love, and stay there. Close your eyes, fall in love, 
and stay there. When I can stay there, I can stay in my heart, and I can stay open, uh, when I can uh, let go of all my judgments, um, I, uh, I'm a different person for it. I would say I'm a better person for it. Um, and uh, I mentioned this was a brief webinar. It's a 30-minute webinar. We're just at 30 minutes now. I would ask anyone who cares to to uh, write anything in as a closing word that you would like to say in the chat. Um, thank you, uh, thank you for your thank yous. Uh, uh, yeah, that was amazing, isn't it? Um, and with that, I uh, wish you a fantastic Valentine's Day. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Uh, whatever time of day it is for you, and uh, I will be sending out this slideshow and the web and the recording for everyone who has signed up for it. So you're very welcome. Thank you. Fun to see a couple of friends on here. Uh, thanks, Gertie. We look forward to seeing you soon. Um, and uh, goodbye for now.